Okay, let's work on an example of a nonlinear problem, linearizing it. Um, let's say we have something like this, a couple differential equations in y and z, and then we want to find the linearized system at, equilib at the equilibrium point that's closest to the origin, so the one that gives us the smallest values of the states. All right, first let's put this in state space form. I've gone ahead and rewritten my state space equations. Now they are nonlinear because we have sine and cosine in them and went ahead and defined f1, x1 dot is equal to x2 just like we had before and that is f1 of x, same thing here, x2 dot, just rewrote it, f2 of x and u, because we have u in there, same thing x3 dot is equal to f3 of x and u. So now we want to find our um, a, b, c, d matrices, so we need to take a bunch of partial derivatives. Alright, so I've just written out the partials here. A is the Jacobian matrix, partial of F1. The top row is all partials with respect to F1. Second row is all partials with respect to F2, F3. And then each column, the first column is with respect to X1. Second column with respect to X2. Third column with respect to X3. Similar kind of thing for B. The first row is for F1, second row for F2, third row for F3. And then each column we take a partial with respect to a different variable. Let's go about building A then. So we're starting with our F1 Take for making our first row. The first element is partial of F1 with respect to X1. F1 is just X2. There is no X1, so the partial of X2 with respect to X1 is just a zero. Same kind of thing. Second position, we're taking partial of F1 again, but now we're taking partial of F1 with respect to X2 and that's going to be a 1 since F1 is equal to X2 only. And similarly, partial of X2 with respect to X3 for the third position is again a 0. There's no X3 in that equation. Okay, second row. Taking all partials with respect to this equation here with respect to taking partials of F2 with respect to X1, X2, X3. So in the first position we're looking at partial with respect to X1. So the first term contributes nothing. There's no X1 there, so there's no term from that. Second term we do have an x1 in here so we're going to need to take the partial of this with respect to x1. Um, chain rule derivative of the inside first. The derivative of 3x1 minus 2x3 with respect to x1 is just a 3. Okay and then the derivative of 7 cosine of something is going to be um, derivative of cosine is negative sine so we're going to have a negative 1 times this 7 coefficient then sine of the same thing that was in there, 3x1 minus 2x3. Okay? And partial of 2u1 with respect to x1 is still 0. Alright, now second element here, take a partial of f2 again with respect to x2, and so there is an x2 here and it's got a 5, so the partial of 5x2 with respect to x2 is just 5. No more x2s in that equation, so that's going to be all of it for that one. And for the third element in the second row, again, taking partial of f2, but now with respect to x3. Last row of a is the last function, taking partials of this last function, f3. Partial of f3 with respect to x1 um, is 0 because there's no x1 in the equation. Same thing for x2, no x2 in this equation, so we get another 0 in the partial with respect to x2 spot. And then finally there is an x3, derivative of 8 sine x with respect sine x3 with respect to x3, derivative of sine is cosine, so we're going to just have 8 cosine x3. It looks like I got a little ahead of myself because now we have to evaluate this at the equilibrium point. And we haven't calculated what the equilibrium point conditions are. So evaluating it at the equilibrium point means we have to put in values for x1, x2, x3. We have to put in values at the equilibrium point. So let's take a step back then and find x1, x2, x3 at the equilibrium point. Okay, we'll just call them, um, let's call them x1, 0, x2, 0, x3, 0, or x1 naught, x2 naught, x3 naught. Okay, to find the conditions at the equilibrium point. Equilibrium point, equilibrium means sitting still, not moving, and so if a system is not moving, the derivatives must be zero. And so what we're going to do is set x1 dot equal to zero, and that means that x2 
x1 does is always equal to x2, so x2 must be 0. Just going with the first equation. Second one, x2 dot has to be 0, so that means 5 x2 naught, I guess I should put my knots on here, x2 naught, x2 0, plus 7 cosine of 3 x1 0, minus 2 x3 0, um, plus 2 u1 0, I guess. Um, that's all equal to 0. And we'll assume that our inputs are 0 at the equilibrium point. x3 dot is 0, and x3 dot is 8 sine x3 0 plus 9u2 0. And again, let's just say that our inputs are 0 at the equilibrium point. All right. And let's see, so we've already got that our x2 naught is 0. Our x3 equation says that 8 sine of x3, 0 is 0. So that means the sine of x3, 0 equals 0. Um, so that means x3, 0 can be many things. Many things will make sine be 0. It can be 0, or it can be pi, or it can be negative pi. It can be negative 2 pi, or it can be positive 2 pi, and so forth. So we said we wanted to pick the, the values closest to the equilibrium point, so we'll just go ahead and pick, pick x3, 0 equals 0, since that one is at, I mean, is at the origin, so that is a good one. And then let's use this last equation, our x2 equation. 7 cosine of something is 0, so then just cosine of that same thing must be 0. So cosine of 3x10 is 0, and so 3x10 must be equal to pi over 2, negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, so forth, okay? And so let's just pick the positive pi over 2, so that makes x10 equal to pi over 6. All right, so x10 is pi over 6, x20 is 0, and x30 is 0. These are our equilibrium point conditions. Now we can go back to our A calculation and put that in. Now we have to evaluate at the equilibrium point. So we're going to put in x10, x20, x30. First row doesn't have any of those in it. Um, second row, the first one is what? Negative 21 sine of x10 is pi over 6, so 3 times pi over 6, and then x30 is 0. Okay? Second term is constant already. We don't have anything to substitute in. Last term we have negative 2 times negative 7, so we have 14. And then again, sine of 3 times pi over 6. Okay, and if we remember then, or just look at this, pi over 3 pi over 6 is pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2 um, gives us a 1. Same thing here. Okay, so these terms are just negative 21 and 14. And then our last row, we have 0, 0, and 8 cosine of x3, 0. So 8 cosine x3, 0, but x3, 0 was um, also 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so this term just becomes an 8. A matrix then, the first row V is a partial of F1 with respect to U1 and U2. Partial with respect to u1 is 0, there's no u there, same thing for u2. Okay. Second row, looking at the partials of f2 with respect to u1 and u2. Taking partial with respect to u1, we have only this term here and we're going to get a 2. There's no, u, no u2 present in this equation, so we're going to get a 0 for the second term. And then finally, looking for the third row, looking at f3. Partial of F3 with respect to U1, no U1 there, so we get a 0. And partial of F3 with respect to U2, there's a 9 U2. Take partial with respect to U2, you get a 9. Our output were Y and Z, and so we are say our output, we usually call that Y, but anyway, let's just call it out, is going to be Y, which is X1, 1 times X1, is not Y prime, and then Z was X3, so our C matrix becomes a 1, 0, 1. D is equal to 0.